Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for joining. This is episode six of my Luminar 2018 tutorial series. Hope you're having fun. I hope you're learning some stuff. I'm having a good time recording it. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the tools menu. There's a number of different tools and uh, they are the crop tool and the transform tool, clone and stamp and the eraser tool. So I'm going to go through each of those on a couple of different photos, show you how they work. So let's get started. Okay, so I have this image here and I'm going to start with the crop tool. If you're in Luminar, um, by the way, I've made no edits to this photo. This is just a base JPEG. Um, you just click the top toolbar under tools and you choose crop. Now I'm on a Mac and all four of these are standard on the Mac. They're gonna be standard on Windows, I believe. I'm not positive, but I think right now, as of the time of this recording, that crop and erase are available on the PC platform, but free transform and clone and stamp are coming later, I think. I need to double check that, but I'm pretty sure. Anyway, we're gonna cover all four of them. Let's get started with crop. Okay, so you choose it, it drops you into the crop window. You can see you have an overlay here. And um, I'm gonna start on the left-hand side. This is where the aspect ratios are. You can choose free, which is what it defaults to. And as the name implies, free just means you can move, uh, you know, you're free, you don't have any constraints, right? So you can just move around any way you want um, and do whatever you want. If you're ever tired of something, you just hit reset and it goes back. Um, if you choose a built-in aspect ratio, it'll adjust it automatically. And then please note, you can move your photo within the crop window. So that's very important because you might want to crop something out and you don't want to be stuck, right? I would go probably with a square crop on this one, something like that. The boaters are there and you can see what's going on, but it's not a whole lot of empty space. But again, if you decide you don't like it, guess what? Just hit reset and uh, you're back. Okay, this is a slider for angle, so that's for adjusting the horizon, right? Uh, again, reset will take you back. You can also do that over here, right? And probably on that side too, yeah. I always go to the right-hand side, but anyway, uh, as soon as you move your mouse outside of the frame, you'll see those two little arrows, and just click and drag, and you can adjust the, uh, you know, straighten, if you will. Uh, I'm gonna hit reset and go back to that. Okay, there's two crop overlays. There's this one and that one. This one is the rule of thirds overlay, so kind of a uh, what I would call a tic-tac-toe board, right? So it divides it into thirds, um, you know, well, ninths, I guess, technically. Uh, but the point is that it's a great way to help you crop because, you know, according to photography theory, the rule of thirds helps you line subjects up to get a better, more stronger visual composition and more pleasing to the human eye. So generally speaking, um, it's good to put things along these lines. Like you can see I have the... The lakeshore, it's a little bit crooked-ish, not totally, uh, but the uh, the lakeshore along that line, and they usually say, whoever they are, um, that at these points of intersection is where you should pl place things that are of uh, high importance in the, in the frame. So if you're taking a portrait, somebody's eye would be there, for example. Um, I didn't do that here, I don't always follow the rules, um, but like you could crop it and uh, get it so that that family on their canoe is uh, at that point of intersection, right? Now it sort of short changes your photo in terms of how this one was shot, but that's what those points are for. Some people call them power points. Anyway, um, that's the rule of thirds. And this one is the golden ratio or the golden rule. You can look that up as well. And uh, anyway, they're just crop overlays that help you sort of visually place uh, things within your composition when you're cropping. I don't mess with those a lot, but they're good to have. Okay, this is image flip and there you go, or rotate, I guess. Uh, you can just flip this thing around. Uh, this one flips it the other way, right? So you could go like that and that and really get crazy, um, but I'll bring it back. And then this one just rotates it, each click rotates it one turn counterclockwise, four turns, gets it all the way back, and of course, reset. So when you're done, you hit done, and whatever you've done, which I haven't done anything, it applies it, drops it back in your main editing window, and you're done. That's the crop tool. So easy to use, straightforward, very helpful to have straight and crop together, and that's how it works. So I'm gonna get another photo and then we're gonna hop into the transform tool. So I'll be right back, one second. Okay, number two, the free transform tool. So it's right here, it's the second one. And um, here's the deal on the transform. It basically allows you to squish your image uh, and compress it. And I rarely use it. The only time I use it uh, is on a sky replacement. So let me show you what I would do there. I have this sunflower field. I would add a new layer, so plus add new image layer. I get this sunset sky image, and as you know, maybe you don't, but if you haven't watched my layers uh, video, uh, with the new layer, it's gonna lay on top entirely. So 
I'm gonna mask this in, and I'm gonna do this really quick uh, with the gradient. I'm just gonna drop it in, something like that, and just kinda get the sky sorta lined up with the horizon. It's not perfect, um, and say done, right? And for those of you that are curious, I am gonna do a video about replacing skies and show you different tips and tricks on how to get it really accurate. So that's coming in the future. Uh, but let's say that that's what I want. However, I want more of the clouds in there. So this is where transform comes in. You just click the tools menu and grab free transform and it'll drop you into that menu. And notice that there's a flip and rotate and an angle or you know leveling option there as well. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go down here and when you move your little hand, it's, it's a hand when it's on top of the image, but when you move down to this little bottom, when you get that double arrow, you can just grab that. And as you see, um, the clouds are now moving further up into the frame. So something like that to me looks better and more realistic than that. That to me looks like I painted some clouds on top of it, which I did. But um, if I'm really trying to pull off and make it look more realistic, which I would be doing, then Something like that looks better because you get the entire sky in the sky. And that looks like the clouds are spread off over the distance or maybe they're coming this way from afar. But to me, that looks a lot more realistic than something like that, which is what would have happened if I had just painted it in. So that's where the transform tool comes in really handy. Um, I only have ever used it on sky replacements for this exact sort of thing. I'm sure people are, are gonna leave comments, I hope you do, um, and have 10 or 20 or 1,000 other ideas for it. I'm sure there's a lot, um, and that's cool. I welcome that stuff. But um, this is how I use it and when I use it. Otherwise, I haven't really used it at all. So it's very powerful for sky replacement and squishing those clouds and making it look better in terms of creating the sense of reality in the uh, sky that you're replacing. So. That's number two, free transform. And once you're done, you just click done and you're back in your editing window and then you go do whatever you wanna do. So that's two, we've covered crop and free transform. Next up, we're gonna get into eraser and then um, clone and stamp. So I'll be right back with another image. Okay, number three is gonna be the erase tool. Now, if you look at the drop down, it's actually listed fourth, but I'm gonna do it third and then we're gonna come back and do clone and stamp, okay? So the erase tool. Uh, whoops, I gotta choose the erase tool. There you go, choose the erase tool and you're brought into the eraser window. So you can add, subtract, you got a lasso, I'll show you that. Um, you can clear a selection and you can choose the size of your brush. So the very simple, straightforward thing is if you see something in your photo, a dust spot, something on your lens, maybe there's a tiny little bird in the distant sky and it's just a little much you know, in your way or whatever, just take it out. All you do is if you're on add, you can adjust the size of your brush, right? You just go like that. You can see my brush is bigger. Um, pardon me, I'm gonna leave it on 20. Let's say I wanna get rid of that little spot there. I can just mouse over it and I can say erase. And then it's gonna come through and it's gonna erase and it's gone. It works really well. Some, something to be aware of. Um, in Luminar Neptune, the previous version, whenever I had a clear blue sky with like a dust spot or something, whenever I would do the eraser and um, it would often leave a little mark, like a little bit of a half circle, almost like a partial halo kind of thing where I had removed the spot. So consequently, I went to Snap Heal or sometimes just did it in Lightroom. But um, in Luminar 2018, I find that it's working better. Now, this isn't a blue sky. Um, this is kind of a grungy scene. And by the way, it always works really well in scenes like this because you have so much texture to choose from. Um, and that's kind of what it's doing. It's choosing based on pixels that are nearby. Once you highlight it and erase, so let's say I got this little speck of green paint and that, it's gonna look at pixels nearby and decide what, uh, what to replace it with effectively. And so when you have a, a situation like this with a lot of texture and detail, it works incredibly well. Um, I still think it works really well better now than it did in the previous version in blue skies, skies and water but you gotta be a little bit more careful and um, it's just something to think about. So if you're doing skies and water, you might have to try it a couple of times before you get it just right. And sometimes I use the tools together to get it just right. Um, and if not, there's always snap heel, which I still think is wonderful. So that's the erase. Now, let's say you're sitting here and you're like, oh gosh, oh, oh man, I screwed up and I drew this line and I don't wanna erase all that. How do I fix it? Well, you can click subtract and then you can come over here and just kind of erase over it. So maybe you wanted just part of that and you went too far, you can uh, delete part of that. Now that's before you click the erase button. Um, so the subtract will help you erase 
some of these things before you've actually hit the erase button because once you've hit the erase button it's on there so um, that's that but if you if if you do it a couple of ways oh, oops I'm an add if you've done it a couple of places and you're like oh crap I screwed up you can also just hit clear selection and it's all gone so um, that allows you to erase um, your your mouse mistakes before you've actually tried to erase spots Ho hopefully that makes sense so one more time I'll say big problem and I'm gonna say oops I don't want that there I just want to erase part of that and okay that looks good I'm good or you say I don't want any of that clear selection boom right so that's how that works um, now the lasso tool okay lasso tool is very cool it allows you to basically create a shape like a square polygon or whatever around something and erase it the erase uh, the way it erases is still it's gonna choose it on its own so just like the erase uh, mouse swipes that we just did, it's doing the same thing. It's saying, hey, what are some nearby pixels that I could basically use instead of the stuff that Jim's telling me to get rid of? So let me show you how it works. Uh, you choose the lasso tool, and if you look at my mouse, I'm over in this right-hand corner here, this little gearbox thing that's on the wall. You can just come over here, and you, first you just click once with your mouse, and then it'll allow you to start drawing a line you click and let go and that drops a point and then you move your mouse and now I'm gonna click and let go again now I'm gonna move my mouse again click and let go move my mouse click and let go and I move my mouse and you notice when it joins back together it formed that little circle it says hey we're gonna join up and make a shape here so I click that and it says yep I'm good and now it's created the polygon so that red section is what's gonna be erased now, if I don't like that, I can choose subtract or clear section, but let's say I like it. I'm going to click erase and let's go check out how good this gearbox is uh, or the removal of the gearbox. And it's not a gearbox, whatever it is. Uh, this is an old prison. So there you go. Um, the shadow was already here. Let me see if before and after will work. Yeah. So there's before. You can see the gear. I'm going to call it a gearbox. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell it is. Um, the box, electrical box. Well, there it is. There's the after. So before, after. So if you weren't looking at this, you probably wouldn't know that I removed something. You could see a little bit of shadow there, but you might think, well, that's a little bit of shadow that was already there. Because if you look at it, some of the shadow down below the box was already there. Um, obviously, because the shadow came from the box. Um, so it's a little bit darker there, but you could fix that, remove it, or leave it. I think it would actually be fine in a scene like this one where there's a whole lot going on. That's how lasso works. And then... Um, you know then you could come in and do some more you know removal if you wanted you could say well I want to get rid of that little paint bit there and so I'm gonna erase it and let's just see if we can get rid of that gym and check it out and boom it's gone right so it works really well especially well on busy detailed backgrounds uh, once you're done just click done and again you return to your main editing window so that is the erase tool which allows you to both mouse you know, erase with the mouse and also choose uh, and draw a shape around something with the lasso tool very powerful very cool but we got more to do we're going to stay on this image and we're going to go to clone and stamp which is option number four in the tools menu so the first thing you'll see is it says click to set the source okay so now i'm going to right bracket key increase my mouse let me see how big my mouse is oops that's too big i'm gonna go something like that okay now you gotta click to set the source. So what that means is you're gonna tell Luminar, all right, wherever my mouse is going, um, I want you to paint over it with the stuff that I've selected. The little uh, thing, I don't know what you call it, it's like a little cross hatch, a little circle with a little sort of a plus sign in it here that you're seeing. This is my mouse on this right-hand corner. Um, that is, um, you, that's how you choose the source. So let's say I'm gonna click here I'm gonna click one, if I can get my mouse to work, there we go. I'm gonna click right there. Now I'm gonna come up, you notice it stayed still. Now I'm gonna come over here, and as you can see, as I go up the wall, it's gonna start eating into that um, and making that stuff disappear, and it's basing it on what the little circle next to my mouse is over. And so it moves along with you as your mouse moves. So watch, as I get into this section, and I start getting into that wall, it's now saying, oh, okay, I've got white wall here. I need to go take care of that. And there you go. I just completely erased all that. 
Now, is it perfect? Probably not, right? There's the before, there's the after. I actually probably need to do a little bit better job here on this line. And so that's where I recommend a couple of things. Number one, check the softness of your brush. Number two, check the size of your brush. And number three, check the opacity of your brush. And probably number four, most importantly, is don't try to do an entirely large object that goes halfway or more, you know, two thirds of the way across the image in one shot. I recommend, and I probably should have done this, but I recommend it actually works better if you go in and do a little bit at a time and then choose another spot and do a little bit at a time because then you don't end up with the issues of this line not being straight and all that. So that's just a tip. But you know, generally speaking, that looks pretty good. And then once you're done, you can say, I'm done. And then your image is back over here. And I've done nothing to this image other than the erasing that I showed you. So it's crooked. It needs to be all kind of jacked up with a bunch of filters. And I'd probably use a sun flare. In fact, I did that. Um, on, uh, I put it on Flickr the other day or something. Anyway, it's kind of fun. But um, there's a lot that I would probably go do to this photo. Uh, but that's it as far as demoing the tools. And so what we've covered um, on the first image with the canoers, we covered the crop tool. On the second image with the, uh, no, uh, with the field of sunflowers, we added a new sky and I showed you how to use the transform to adjust the uh, size of the sky or the the alignment or, you know, the crunching, what's the word? <laughs> the squishiness of the sky. I squished the sky to make it fit better in the sky. On this image, we did number three, erase, and took some spots out, uh, and also did the lasso tool. And then uh, lastly, we did clone and stamp to take out big stuff. And that's the four tools, my friends. I hope that it helps. And if you have any questions, let me know. Leave a comment, like the video, share it with your friends if you would, and don't forget to subscribe. I got plenty more coming. Um, a whole lot of stuff, actually, that I'm trying to uh, get sketched out and, uh, and done. So keep coming back. There's more stuff coming every couple of days or so. And that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for your time. I know you're busy, so thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. And adios.